video on how to rebuild your lifters on a VG30 ET or E. What you will need is something to fit in. Uh, I think they said it was like 2 mil. Um, anything really works. You'll need a flathead screwdriver. You'll need 30 weight oil. I'm using 10W30. A pick. Um, and uh, I'm using Zaline but you just essentially need a degreaser and a paint thinner. Essentially what happens is there's a little check ball. Don't know if the camera will pick it up, but mm -hmm. right in there, that releases oil through there, um, which can become slow, clogged, or non-functional. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to disassemble and reassemble them. So essentially there's gonna be five pieces. You got your your clip there, your C clip. You got what seems to be a, a, a pretty much an oil circulation piece. You have your check ball, you have your spring, and then you have the lifter itself. What happens is you get oil coming through your your lifter assembly going through this down through here, keeping pressure on to your rockers so you don't have tapping. It's gonna be hard to show this. So I'll show, essentially, what you need to find is this hole uh, for the disassembly. So what you're gonna do is you turn the top piece just like this. So there it is. I don't think the camera will pick it up, but uh, you can see the bottom half of that hole. What you'll need, you can use a C-clamp. Uh, I'm using a vise just because uh, I don't have a C-clamp readily available. What you're going to do is you're going to compress it until, let's see if we can turn on the flash. Maybe we can just, you're going to compress it until, here you go, until you're able to fit your two millimeter whatever toothpick. People use different things. I'm using whatever the hell I could find. Now, once you have it in there, you can see it stays depressed. Like me. Just kidding. Jesus. The C-clip is just sitting in there. Now, these have tremendous amounts of force behind them. Um, I had one fly across my room. Somehow I found it. So, what I do is I put my thumb, my pointer finger... And I make sure that most of the area is blocked so it can't go flying. And you just do that, scoop it up on the side. There it is. Now you're going to want to, I, me, I like to make sure that they stay in order so you can see. I got one, two, three, four, five, or four, and I got one, two, three, four down in here. It's just, I don't want to get them mixed up. So once you have that C-clip out, you pull your stopper out. You're gonna pull the veins out. Kinda roll it around, put it in order. Then you're gonna grab. So you you want to depress the check ball in there so it doesn't get vacu vac uh, vacu vacuum locked. You're gonna just kinda hook it around got to go in and out. This one's a little sticky. Oh, here it comes. And then there's the assembly. Kind of tap out the remainder of that oil. So you got your spring and you got your check ball. Once you have it all apart, you're going to put I don't put the C-clip in, I'm not really too concerned about the C-clip being dirty, it's going to get dirty as soon as it goes back in. You're going to spin it around, you can't really see much right now, but I've had this one sitting in here, you should have it sitting in there for about 30 minutes until most of the varnish gets off of it. I am, however, only making sure that the functionality of the check ball works. So, what I do is when I put it in, 
I let them all soak. Right when I put all the pieces in, I let them soak. But right when I put them in, I'm going to grab my small little poker here. And as you can see, I'm going to wipe off the bottom here. Oops. As you can see, there's no fluid leaking out the bottom. So that says that the check ball works. When you first put them in, you'll notice that when you press the check ball, the flow will be kind of congested, I guess. Once you let it sit in there, it gets smoother. And I just like to operate the check ball a few times. Very gently, you don't want to score the ball in there and create more problems. So once that's all done, you're going to want to pull everything out very gently. My fingers are sensitive, so I'm not dipping my fingers into paint thinner which I don't recommend doing at home. Let me tap that out a bit. You can see the color difference slightly between them. Um, you like that smell? You can smell the gasoline, right? All right. So always keep them in order. You know, and drop them in nicely. You don't want to just smash them in there and score all this shit up. So as I said, right when you put them in, you're going to want to Make sure that your check ball works. This one looks like it's working. Oh, maybe not. So that's what you're looking for, is a little drip. That's what you don't want. You can see how it's slowly accumulating. So what I do... Put it back down, because it's like, you can't really see it against your shirt. But yeah. What you're going to see is a drip accumulate after about a minute holding it. What I like to do is just clean them out. So you just can see it's a little bit slower than the drain I showed you guys before. It's a little bit congested. So you let that sit. All right, so how we assemble them is first you want to grab your 30 weight oil. I hear that 50 weight does work better. However, uh, it's summertime here. I'm not concerned about leakage. Um, so you're going to want to grab your small funnel. You're going to want to fill it up around halfway. That's kind of fucking hard. So I just have a napkin under it and try and be very... I mean, this, this is a nozzle off of a, uh, off a gear, gear oil bottle, which works just fine for me. All right, so as you can see, the oil is draining out of the stop hole, which is A-OK. -okay. You drop your spring in there. You're going to drop your check ball in there. You're going to see it's going to start streaming out of there. Now, once it's fully submerged like this, you're going to need a little pick. And be careful, or else it will squirt out. Don't be looking in that hole and getting oil in the eye. It's, just, it's not an experience that... I would recommend till it's at the bottom and then you can feel the the spring working if you give it a little bit more pressure you don't want to do that but and then you're gonna put your your veins in there yeah. so you're gonna want to get this hole and this hole lined up before you assemble it it just makes your life a lot easier and it sometimes twists before reassembly all you're gonna do is exactly how, what you did when you disassembled it. There will be oil coming out, as you can see. And you're gonna grab your, oh, let's, so you see that I compressed it until that hole was there. I'm gonna grab everything and then release it out of there. And last but certainly not least is you need to get your, your C-clip in there. It's easier to do on your leg. Well, for me, at least in my basement. And simply, not so simply, sometimes. Don't stab yourself. Get it back in there. And done. You have refinished, rebuilt, however you want to call it, your lifters. Thanks for watching. I am posting a video soon of the 300. Big turbo swap, it's been taking me about half a year. Um, and what happened to the Z causing for this turbo swap. Anyways, have a wonderful day. 
watch some more videos. I don't know. I make a lot of videos of me breaking shit, so stay tuned.